Did you know that the BMW 3 Series is the most popular BMW ever produced? And it accounts for 30% of all BMW sales ever. Well, of the 3 Series, there's one in particular that hails as the best of all time and has sold anywhere from 3 to 10 million across the world. So let's go ahead and get into this video and explain why, drum roll, the BMW E9X chassis is the best of all time. Now the E9X chassis is comprised of three of the most popular platforms. You have the E90, which is a four door sedan. You have the E92, which is the two door coupe. And then you have an E93, which is the convertible. So this is the drop top. And so each one of these platforms gives you a little bit of a different taste of the BMW experience. So let's go ahead and get into the top number one reason that the BMW E9X is the best ever. And that is going to be the exterior styling. So I want you guys to hear me out. The E90, the four door sedan, launched in 2005, but was called the 2006 model. So in 2005, you had a car that had Xenon LED headlights that lit up the road. You had the tri-beam LED like taillights. And overall, the E90 just has a very executive look to it. It is a little bit more rounder than the E92 and E93, but overall, guys, it looks extremely good for the time that it came out. And in 2005, the competition looked terrible. Let's pull up a 2005 Chevy right here. I want you to guess what Chevy this is. And it looks terrible, guys. It has no inspiration behind the exterior. It looks like a cookie cutter car that you would see in like a GTA video game. It just doesn't look good. It's uninspiring in every way possible. And I want you to compare that to the BMW E90, it's not even close, guys. Yes, it has more of a round look. Yes, it doesn't scream supercar or sports car off the bat. That's what the M3 is for. But overall, the exterior styling is phenomenal. And that pushes us to what's deemed as one of the best BMWs of all time, and that is the E92 coupe the e92 in my opinion is prime time bmw yes the e39 and e46 are in that same conversation but the e92 coupe takes away from the best aspects of bmw while at the same time modernizing it i had an e46 and i loved it i did the m conversion to it i had the harman kardon sound system black interior aluminum trim pristine condition paint corrected I loved my E46, guys. Like, I cannot put in words. I had upgraded halos, upgraded taillights. It was amazing. It's really what got me truly into BMW because it didn't push a lot of power, but it felt quick, and I took a lot of pride in driving it. The one thing about the E46 for me is I always felt like it didn't look modern enough. It looked aggressive, especially the E46 M3 with the quad tips and everything and the wider fenders but the e46 just didn't look modern enough when i looked at it it still looked boxy and it still kind of looked like an older car the e92 completely turns that on its heels the e92 basically gives you all the amazing aspects of the e46 that really made it stand out but modernizes it you get a modernized infotainment system if you opt for iDrive. you get clean crisp xenon headlights with crisp halos up front. You get aggressive body lines, especially, especially if you opt for the M Sport package. And there's a reason why BMW, when they launched the M3, they kept the E92's front end. They used the pre-LCI E92 headlights. They used the pre-LCI E92 M front bumper. When BMW made the E92 and the E90 M3, they used all of the best aspects of the E92 LCI because it just looked so aggressive. The headlights look like they're snarling at you. The front grille looks like its nostrils are flaring. And especially if you get the M conversion or the M3 or any of the M components on it, the body lines just look perfect. To me, it's the perfect blend of a rounded, elegant, curved look while also being sharp, daring, and aggressive. The E92, in my opinion, is cream of the crop and really what made BMW, I think, skyrocket into the future. And that launches us into the next platform, and that is the E93 convertible. Now, the E93 basically takes the E92 coupe and just adds a drop top to it. 
it's still the same exact styling as an E92. Besides, you have kind of this more longer trunk look to it. It has like a longer trunk just because the drop top has to be stored in that trunk area. It gives the E93 this long look in the rear and it still looks amazing, especially when you drop the top. Holy moly, guys, when you drop the top on the E93 and especially the M3, oh my, the E93 M3 with the top drop to it is probably one of the most baller cars you can drive. It just screams power and then it has a drop top and it's a BMW. You're getting luxury and power and that freeing feeling of a convertible all in one car. So I really do love the E93. In my order, exterior wise, I would say E92, then E93, then E90. So especially in the M, like I said, you just can't get better than that. So now the number two thing that makes the E9X absolutely amazing, I would say is the interior. And now for whatever reason, a lot of people who came from the older platforms, they bash on the E9X's interior, but I think the interior is amazing. I think for a car designed in 2005, you have a push start button. You have sleek lines all throughout the interior. Now I know that a lot of people bash on the iDrive double hump, like the hump on the dashboard. And I understand that because I personally don't like it, but overall, the interior's great. You get a sound system that sounds pretty dang good out of the factory. You get subwoofers underneath both of the front seats. So whoever's sitting down while you're driving gets to feel the base fully envelop them. You get a steering wheel that's well designed. The sport steering wheel actually looks sporty. You get the ambient orange color that BMW includes all throughout the interior. It's all color coordinated. That shade of orange is actually the softest on the eyes and the least distracting during nighttime driving. That's actually why they opted for it. But now you see a ton of companies who copied that. But overall, the interior, the sport seats, they look great. They have thick bolsters that hold you in. You can inflate the side bolsters to hold the driver in. You have an extendable thigh rest. You have all of these different features. I could go on and on, but the interior, especially with some minimal upgrades, like some carbon fiber, in my opinion, looks amazing. It's modern but it doesn't do anything too crazy. And that's personally why I like the E92, E90, and E93, is it just feels like it's a driver's car. It's a driver's experience on the interior. So even though that gets some flack, I personally think the interior on the E9X is great because it's sporty, and like I said, it's utilitarian and practical. So now the number three thing that makes the E9X the best I would say is the engine and drivetrain. So now starting off in popularity, you have the BMW 328i, and that's going to come with the naturally aspirated 3.0 inline six engine, and that's good for about 230 horsepower. And now the N52 has gotten engine of the year multiple times, and for good reason. It's so reliable. And yes, I know you're gonna have people who own BMWs that say, oh, it's so unreliable, but they're at like 150,000 miles complaining about an oil leak. All engines leak oil, all engines burst coolant hoses. But what the N52 did was fix the terrible cooling system from the engines that were put in the E46 before it and overall just made this thing bulletproof. I'm at 240,000 miles on mine and for the most part, it's been very, very simple minor things. We're talking valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, oil pan gaskets, ignition coils, things that basically you'd replace on any car. Besides that, the actual mechanics of it, especially being timing chain driven, is actually very bulletproof, guys. People get these engines up upwards of 300, 400,000 miles as a daily driver. My E92 is heavily modified and I drive my N52 around with zero issues. And now that leads us into the more powerful, infamous, N54 engine, and that's going to be in the BMW 335i's. This is basically the same N52 engine that's twin turbocharged from the factory. Yes, you heard me right, twin turbocharged. There's not one, but two turbochargers inside of this BMW engine. And this is going to be amazing for people who are seeking power because you can get one of these, it comes with 300 horsepower stock 
Then you get simple upgrades like an intake, tune, and exhaust, and then bam, you're pushing 500 horsepower, taking people to Gapplebee's anywhere on the street. The N54 is basically like the modern 2JZ Supra engine. Everybody who wants to squeeze power out of their car opts for that N54 engine. So the number four reason why the E9X is the best platform ever is going to be the aftermarket. The aftermarket is absolutely enormous. If you just go on Google and type BMW E90 parts or BMW E92 parts, there are so many websites that offer so many upgrades for your car from upgraded taillights to headlights to interior trim to custom steering wheels to turn signal lights to led sequential turn signals no matter if you want to go the oem plus route and stay very you know bmw centric upgrades or if you want to go full bananas you want your car to be a track beast the aftermarket is massive there's just so much out there for these cars, guys. You can dial in your build to the exact parameters that you want. You can make your car look exactly how you want to in your head. And now one of the top reasons having a huge aftermarket is so amazing is because there's also so many DIY videos. You can buy an E90, E92, E93 and learn how to work on it in minutes because there's always videos on how to install upgrades, how to fix things, how to replace things. Everything's out there. Again, if you go on YouTube and shout out to this channel, I try to make a ton of useful DIY videos for you. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll show you how to fix your car, save time and money all in one. But there's so many other DIY videos out there on how to fix and replace things. You can go all throughout Google and there's so many write-ups and step-by-steps and pictures and things of that nature that'll help you be an educated owner and save a ton of money. And I could probably even move that up to number one to be honest because it's just so important that, that whatever car you own you know, has a huge aftermarket. So now the number five and final thing that makes the E9X the best platform ever, I would say is just the fact that it is the greatest bang for your buck. You can find the E90, E92, and E93 for just such a great price. And even the M3 models just offer so much for the price point. You can get a car that looks modern, performs great, is reliable, has a huge aftermarket, all for around four to ten thousand twelve thousand dollars depending what you get for the 328 and 335i you can pick those up for anywhere from 3500 to like 6k i've seen pristine condition twin turbo 335i's being sold for eight thousand dollars because people are moving and even then People always come up to me and tell me my E92 looks like a 2015 and they're absolutely dumbfounded when I tell them it's just a 2007. Whether you're buying a first car for college and you need a reliable mode of transport that has a good sound system and is luxurious and sporty, or whether you're a diehard German car enthusiast, they're just such a good bang for your buck and no matter where you fall on that spectrum of ownership, you'll be happy no matter what. You'll get the great exterior, the comfortable interior, the sportiness, the reliable or powerful engine, whatever you opt for, and a huge aftermarket all at your disposal for such a great price. So overall, I think they're one of the best bang for your buck cars that you can buy. And I would definitely be willing to have that conversation or debate that with anybody. And I'm really curious to see what y'all think. So please, please, please comment down below with anything you agree or disagree with. I'd be happy to debate any of these topics or maybe shed perspective in a different way. So please leave a comment down below. Hit that thumbs up if you found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way. And be sure you hit that subscribe button because on this channel, we work to save you the most money and time as possible. But thank you so much for watching. I love each and every one of you for all the support you've shown, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.